So before we uh, jump into the message which God has put in my heart to uh, bring it to all of you, let's get together and pray to him that let his words come, let his spirit guide us through this time and help us learn more about him and his will for our each one of us in our lives. Let's bow down, close our eyes, and remember our Lord who has died for us as the whole world celebrates the Good Friday and Easter. For us as believers, the death and resurrection is a daily realization that we have in life. We don't need to celebrate it on a particular day because we celebrate it every day. If our Lord did not go to death, if our Lord did not rise today, and that day we would not have been over here enjoying the salvation, the hope that we have in him. Thank you, Father, for your for your provision to bring Christ onto this world and 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 make him a sacrificial person to for for our sins. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for sending your only Son to die for our sin and give, give us this life, Lord. Lord, as we uh, get together this morning, Lord, to meditate upon the, your word, Lord, give us, give us, let your spirit guide us, Lord. Let your spirit cover us and bring each and every one of our brothers and sisters in this meeting together in one accord, the, uh, hearing the, the word which you want to talk to us. Thank you, Father, for this morning. We submit everything unto your name, into your precious name, Lord. We ask this prayer through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So um, I wanted to talk about something which we don't usually hear on a Good Friday or a, a, um, a, a Easter service. This was slightly different, but God put these words, this this message in my heart. Uh, but, and that was a, like a surprise to me because uh, this was something which I heard as a child, as a very young boy, I heard this message uh, and I, I don't remember anything about that message. The only thing I remember was the two thieves. That's the only thing I remember about that message. Uh, and then I, I, I was meditating upon this and I was trying to think like, what, 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 what is this two thieves? What are the two thieves that were crucified uh, with uh, um, Christ on, uh, on, on that same day? What is the implication? What, what does that teach us? And that's what we are going to look on, into this day. So let's turn our uh, Bibles to Luke chapter 23, verse 32. And uh, we will read from verse 32 through uh, the end of 41. So Luke chapter 23, and you can see it on the screen. I just have a small portion over there, but I think Joel is volunteering to read over here. So he's going to read from chapter Luke chapter 23, verse 32 onwards. Two others, both criminal criminals were led out to be executed with him. When they came to the, a place called the skull, they nailed him to the cross, and the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, they said. Let him save himself if he is really God's, God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him, if you are king of Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words. This is the king of Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, aren't you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested, Do, don't you feel God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then, then he said to Jesus, 
remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. Thank you, Joel. So um, we see that there are two criminals that were uh, crucified um, on each side of Jesus Christ uh, on that day. And uh, the two other synoptic gospel, the gospel of Matthew and Mark also presents this instance in, in, in that book. But the gospel of John does not have this, uh, um, uh, this incident recorded. Uh, one marked difference between the three synoptic gospels is only Luke, the gospel of Luke, presents this incidence where the second criminal or one of the criminal um, asks Jesus um, to remember him when he's in his kingdom. The other two does not record this instance. The other two uh, says that the rebels hurdled um, insult upon Jesus. So, uh, so th what we understand is uh, there was it was a plural used the rebels hurdled insult upon Jesus. So, what we understand is uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the there is slight uh, difference, but the 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 uh, what Luke has recorded it is. Uh, an instance which has uh, definitely happened and is an instance which is not recorded in the other two synoptic gospel. Um, before, um, th this is uh, almost the last incidence that is there before uh, our Lord Jesus uh, uh, left his spirit on this earth and, 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 uh, uh, and, uh, and, and died on that cross. So this was almost the last incident. So the, uh, the last words which we read about the two thieves, the one thief scoffing and hurdling insult at Jesus, and the second thief uh, uh, talking about uh, the, 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 the uh, um, fear of God and all those stuff. But we, we want to go through, before reaching that uh, two, two sentences which the two thieves discussed, we want to go through some of the things that has happened in the middle from verse 32 through the, 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 this place where we re reached to the discussion which the two thieves had. The first thing that we see here is a, 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 a hurdle of insults, uh, uh, like uh, people were throwing insults upon Jesus Christ as he was crucified on that cross. The first one we see is, you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. This was uh, uh, th th this is one of the uh, insults that uh, the people, the passing by people, were throwing upon Jesus. They were looking at Jesus and saying that you, in your ministry, told that you are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Now, why don't you save yourself? Okay. So, um, what was Jesus referring to when I meditate upon this? And, and I think like the world is still cannot understand what Jesus meant by those words, he, that he is going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. And that was a, 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 a event which has happened, right? That, that was an event which has happened and it well recorded in the gospel. And people knew that Jesus made this claim that he is going to destroy the temple and build it in three days. Right, that was a claim made by Jesus, and people heard that. And now the passing by people over there, looking at Jesus on the cross, telling to him that you, who said these words, that you can build this temple which took forty plus years to be built, now you are, uh, are hanging over there, and and you cannot uh, save yourself. That was what he, uh, the people were scoffing at Jesus Christ. But we all know what Jesus meant by these words, that the temple would be destroyed and rebuilt in three days. 
Jesus was talking about his body, that he is going to die and rise in three days and save this world. Now, now there is no need for a temple. Now, Jesus Christ is our temple, which is, which is our new hope, new, new, the, the resurrected Christ is our temple where, where we can go anytime, any moment. We, to, 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 to and, and get our, our, our hope and our uh, assurance in him. So that was the first uh, uh, scoffing or insult that was uh, uh, thrown out unto Jesus. The second one, which again came by the passing by people, and, and I, I looked into all the three synoptic gospels. Probably these are not listed over here, but this is from probably from the from the ending chapters from Matthew. So this is another scoffing, another insult which was coming down was come down from the cross if you are the son of God. Right. So that was, uh, I think that's recorded in Matthew. Um, anyway, so there's no need to look into that at this point. But this was one of the insults which was thrown by the people. And, uh, and, and yes, that's, that's in, in Matthew uh, chapter 27, verse 40, uh, which says, Come down from the cross if you are son of the God. So uh, this reminds us about something else. If you remember this thing, uh, so, uh, who challenged Jesus with a similar word like this? Uh, I think it's very easy to remember, right? There is a devil or Satan who, um, who, who, who challenged Jesus to, 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 to do something and, and asked him, if you are the son of God, do this, right? If you remember that, and that's very easy to recollect. Like Jesus was um, in the wilderness doing, uh, praying, uh, fasting and praying. And when he returned after 40 days, this is what the Satan was telling him to do. If you are the son of God, Turn this rock into bread, right? He is challenging Jesus Christ to do something. And that's what this uh, people over here also challenging Jesus Christ to do that is come down from the cross if you are the son of God. So uh, this is, uh, uh, again, reminds me uh, of uh, the, the, uh, the uh, attribute of this world, right? The world wants you to prove yourself. And this is again where uh, we see the act of the Satan. The Satan is challenging Jesus to come down from the cross and prove yourself. But that was not the purpose, right? We all know that the Christ was on that cross, not because of Pilate, not because of Judah, not because of uh, the Pharisees, not because of uh, anyone, right? But he was on the cross because of the eternal plan of God to save humanity. And the, Jesus was on the cross suffering the pain and dying and shedding his blood to carry our, the burden of our sins. Right, that was the purpose of the cross over there. That was the purpose of, of, of Jesus Christ. And, and the purpose of Jesus Christ was not to be there to show his might by hanging over there and coming down and proving to the world that I am the God. That would have not solved the plan of our almighty God. So we need to understand that, that uh, God's plan is about human uh, thought. So God at that, that moment had a plan and he uh, executed that plan in a really, really nice way. It was not human who would, or even the Satan who could change that thing. So God was there on the cross for a purpose and that purpose was to take our burden and, 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 and redeem us and, 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 and save us from the sinful nature of this world. And he accomplished that thing. Now, the third uh, thing came from the chief priest and the teachers of the law. So now it's now after the, the people who were passing by, 
came the teacher, chief priest and the teachers of the law who, who were also standing there. And now they started to throw insult at Jesus Christ. And, and, and what, did, what does they say? They started saying he saved others, but he cannot save himself. So that's what, uh, um, that, that's what the chief priest was saying, right? So this is again, um, kind of a, establishing the fact that Jesus came on this earth and he saved a lot of people. We, we know that Jesus raised Lazarus from the death. We know that Jesus saved the young girl who was in, uh, 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 um, who was sick. Jesus came and, and called her and she, she, she came out uh, uh, from her death. So, so it's, it's a fact, it's, it's, it's everyone in that time there knew that Jesus saved people from the physical death, right? So he, so the, the chief priests are now telling that you who Jesus, who is, who walked on this earth, who saved the lives of the people, who rose, who brought back people who were dead, now he cannot save himself. Again, this is an insult thrown out. So, so two things we can uh, think about over here. One, Jesus came and gave life to the people who died. At the same time, Jesus was not there to listen to the chief priest and the Pharisees, the insult that they were bringing upon Jesus. Jesus was there on the cross for a purpose, and the purpose was to fulfill the plan of the Almighty God and Father. The fourth point, again, coming from the chief priest and the uh, teachers of the law was, uh, uh, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. So this is again a, a beautiful, very, very important thing, you know. What are they asking for? They are asking for a sign. They are asking for a, a one more miracle, right? So they, they are asking, okay, that's fine. Everything is good. You cannot save yourself. But just show us one thing. Just show us one thing. Just come down from the cross. Just come down from the cross and we will believe in you. And what did Jesus say in Matthew 16, 4? Jesus said in Matthew 16, 4, a wicked and adulterous generation looks for a sign. So he has been with the people in that age, walking with them, healing the sick, raising the dead, driving out, uh, 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 evil spirit, preaching, teaching, everything walking on that, uh, 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 in that age among that people. But today again, once again, this perverted generation, right? Think about it. Like today in this world also, people are going to ask the same thing. Show me a miracle. Heal this thing. Do this thing. And then I will believe in him. So that's what the, the, the irony of the humanity is and the irony of the law, teachers of the law and the chief priest is they seen everything that Jesus did while on the earth and still they were asking for another sign, right? So the fifth point over here is again coming from the uh, uh, Pharisees and the teachers of the law. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. For who said I am the son? Jesus said, I am the son of God, right? So there is, uh, uh, there is no question about that thing because uh, our, our, our heavenly father um, uh, twice um, uh, called out and said this thing, this is my son with whom I'm pleased. So that was during the time when, when Jesus went down into Jordan for baptizing. Uh, and when he came out, uh, the, the clouds opened up and a voice appeared saying, uh, this is my son with whom I'm well pleased. And then again in Matthew 17, Jesus' transfiguration, uh, the, uh, the God, our father, 
proclaimed very clearly that this is the son with whom this is the son with whom I love. With him, I'm well pleased. Listen to him. So that's the sound of the Father in heaven. So uh, the, 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 what we learn over here is uh, is uh, Jesus um, um, testified of him being the Son of God. Jesus testified, or God testified. On top of that, God, our heavenly father, testified that he is my son. On top of that, the disciples, the people on that, in that age knew that he is the Messiah. But still there were this small number of people or there's this large number of people who did not believe and, and wanted uh, wanted signs and, and, and wanted miracles and wanted something more to, to prove this thing, right? So the, the, these are the things which were going on during that time when these two prisoners, these two um, uh, rebels or, or, or um, um, criminals were hanging alongside with Jesus. So both of these two prisoners were one on right hand, one on left hand side, and then uh, all this thing happening in that scene over there, all the passerbyers uh, who were going from that place, looking at Jesus on the cross, was hurling insult and scoffing at him. The chief priest and the teachers of the law were making comments and, and, and talking um, um, that all this stuff was going on. And th these were being heard by these two thieves that were hanging on the cross at the same time when Jesus was over there. So that's the setting in which I want to take you now. So and like I mentioned, uh, both the uh, synoptic, first synoptic gospels, Matthew and Mark says that the rebels also uh, insulted Jesus Christ. But the uh, gospel of Luke very clearly shows the differences between the two. So let's go into our, our thinking about the two thieves now. The first thief, we don't know whether it's right hand or the left hand. Some people say that is the right hand and the other, but the scriptures does not clearly discriminate which was the thief who was saved and which was the thief who was doomed. I call it thief number one. The thief number one says, aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Okay, that was the one question or one comment with thief number one had. And the thief number two had a, 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 a very uh, different uh, and a little longer comment than him, but still a very short one, you know. Uh, he, 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 he mentioned very, very small thing, like he, he was talking and addressing to the um, thief number one, and, and he was telling, don't you fear God? This was thief number two telling to thief number one. Since you are under the same sentence, what is the same sentence? That all of them are crucified there and all of them are going to die. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly. For we are getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So these are the two uh, differences or two comments from the two thieves that are recorded in the Gospel of Luke. And, 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 and for a moment, when we think about these things, it's very clear what's going around in their mind and what kind of personality they are and what is what is happening in their mind. And that's what I want to bring out a little bit. The first thief, he believed in the world, right? He, he, he heard what was happening there. He was hanging alongside with Jesus there. He heard the bypassers, what they were talking. He heard the teachers of the law, what we, they were talking. And he believed the world. And he was also telling, okay, uh, aren't you a messiah? Uh, if you are a messiah, why don't you save yourself and us? 
So this was this was like his uh, uh, his uh, um, thinking. Okay. And the second thing that he he believed what the world was saying. The second thing was he was questioning his authority. And how did he question his authority? He was asking, "Aren't you the Messiah?" Right. So what we discussed in the previous slide was there's no question about he being the God, because God testified about this is my son. You should listen to him. Christ performed miracles. Christ saved people. Christ said he is the savior. Christ said he is the living water. Christ said there is no way except me to reach the Father. After all these things, he is still questioning the authority of Christ, uh, and 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 he is believing what the world is uh, telling him that this is uh, all blasphemy and this is wrong. He is not the Son of God, and he is not the Christ. So, so you can think about the, these two attributes of this thief number one. One, he is believing what the world is telling him. Two, he is questioning the authority that God has in this world, right? So that's very, very straightforward. Now, what, what did the thief number two do? He said, don't you fear the God? So he definitely feared God. He knew that God punishes the wicked and rewards the uh, obedient and, and, and the uh, good people. So, so he feared the God, the first thing. The second thing is he believed in Jesus Christ, right? If he would not have believed, if he would have even any doubt that this is not the son of God, this is not the son of God who would be judging him, he would not have made that request. So he said, so he clearly believed in Jesus Christ. The third thing is he accepted his authority, right? What was his authority? Jesus has authority over, over heaven and earth. He is the, he would be at the judgment seat to judge the living and the dead. So, 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 so he knew that the kingdom is his and he knew that the authority is with him. And that's why he made this request like, when you would be in your kingdom, remember me. The fourth thing is he repented. He, how do we know that he repented? Very clear, right? Most of the people in this age, if they do a wrong thing, they would say that I'm not wrong, or they would say that I, I did not do anything wrong, or they would try to justify themselves, or they would try to defend themselves. They would not say openly that I did something wrong. But here the thief is saying that I am being punished justly because of my deeds. I did wrong, and that's why I'm here in the cross. So he definitely is repenting on the things that he has done, and he knew the consequence of what he has done in his life is what he is uh, getting at this moment when he is hanging on the cross. And therefore, he repented, and, and then he, that's, that, that's the end of the point. And the final thing is he prayed for his deliverance. So he feared the God, he believed in Jesus Christ and his authority, he repented, he made a simple, very simple, straightforward uh, prayer. Jesus, remember me when you are in your kingdom. So that was so simple, straightforward, right? No complications, nothing. Uh, 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 for a moment, we can start thinking about this was the easiest salvation anyone could get off, right? Just one word and he is saved. Jesus promised that today you will be with me in the paradise. That's the God who is telling this thing that he, he is going to be there with Jesus in the paradise. What a beautiful thing happened to this guy who has all through his life, I don't know about his history, what he did in his past, but one thing is sure that he was a, he, he, he did something wrong and he repented. And, 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 and that day he acknowledged the, uh, the, the, the authority of Christ and made a simple prayer. Remember me when you are into your kingdom. And then the Jesus said, uh, today when I will be in, in paradise, you will be with me in the paradise. So that, that's, that's the beauty of this, this simple message of the, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, um, cross. 
So um, I, I want to quickly dive into some of this, uh, some of the very simple things that we have talked about this day. Right? The message of the cross is very uh, simple. Uh, this transforms people, and what does it do? It gives us life. So uh, I, I, I always believe, and I always preach, and I always teach. Uh, the simple things are the main things. Okay, the simple things are the main things, and the main things are the simple things, right? So there, there's no complications. There's no complications. Jesus says that my yoke is easy. So and my burden is light. Jesus says that thing. So there's no complications in Jesus. The 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 message of salvation. There is no big theology, no big philosophy. All we have to do is believe, and that's all. We will get the salvation that is promised by Jesus. So I want to quickly walk you through. I have maybe 10 more minutes I have. So I want to quickly walk you through this uh, uh, few simple stuff, which forms the, the, the founding uh, pillars, uh, or, or, or you, you may say the, the, the foundation of our, our, our faith, right? This is like, uh, like very basic, but I want to reiterate this thing. This is the message of the cross. There is not, no, nothing complicated over here. And that's what we have seen in the previous slides, how easily the salvation, the the, the 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 deliverance came to that thief and, and today we will visit this thing uh, quickly uh, reflecting upon the law two things i want to very quickly want to uh, brush through over here is observing the law is difficult one and for the redemption of the sins in the law we need to make sacrifices so those are the two things which we want to say uh, present about the law. Observing the law is very difficult. Okay, so uh, there, if you go through Old Testament, there's so many instances where um, uh, of, 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 of all those stuff. But two instances which I want to bring up, out over here is one is given in Numbers 15, where a man picks up sticks on a Sabbath day. A man picks up sticks on a Sabbath day and the Israelites bring him to the Moses and Moses goes in the presence of Lord and asks, what should we do? The Lord, our heavenly God says, stone him to death. So that was the punishment. If you do anything on a Sabbath day, that was the law. That was the law. So people took stone, threw at him and he was killed that day because he did not keep this habit. The second thing is in Leviticus 24, again, an example, there's numerous of them. Israelites brought a man who was blaspheming. Blasphemy was the one thing which the Jewish brought out as the uh, um, allegation to Jesus Christ. And for blasphemy, Jesus was uh, uh, given the verdict to be crucified. Okay, that was the Jewish law. So, Israelites bring a person who was blaspheming and uh, bring him to Moses and Moses went to the in the presence of the Lord and the Lord said, stone him to death. So that was how strict the law was. Observing the law is very difficult. If you have to observe the law, uh, you better be, uh, be very careful. It's not going to be easy. The second thing is, in and out, year and year, every time you have to make a sacrifice for the redemption of the sin. I don't know how many animals would be killing. Maybe more than, uh, maybe more chicken we have to kill for sacrifice than that we eat today. So, uh, but that's the reality, you know. If we were under the law, this would have been a big disaster. This would have been a big um, uh, mess for all of us. But what we see over here is, again, I want to quickly brush through these things and don't want to spend a lot of time. What does Jesus do? The salvation that we have through Jesus, it's a free gift. And I'm going to rush through again. It's a grace that is given freely. No one can earn it. There's no one who can earn it, right? And, and, and then no one deserves it then we stand justified in front of God. Not only we are justified, we are made heirs of the kingdom. We are made heirs of the kingdom. Sorry about that. We are made heirs of the kingdom. We are given the inheritance of the kingdom. 
So let me. Okay. So that, that that's the that's the salvation that we get from Jesus Christ. So it's a free gift. And if, if we want to read quickly Romans 6:23, I will read through it. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So uh, so, so it's freely available. Like I said, the, the, it's simple. The message of the cross is simple. There's nothing complicated. It's a free gift to us. Second, it's a grace, right? Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Imagine I fail and I get a zero in, in, in a subject and then my teacher says that uh, I'm going to give you 40 marks and you are going to pass. Okay, so the two things, one, the teacher is in the position or the professor is in the position to give me that uh, the 40 number. So he has the authority. Second thing, I failed miserably, right? I had zero, not even 39, I had zero. And then that's the example I would say, his, his, uh, his, his about his grace, the, uh, the grace of God is, it's, it's what has been said is in scriptures, his grace is rich, right? That's the word which is used in scripture, rich. Uh, I don't exactly remember the phrase, but his grace is so rich, right? Uh, what's that? Riches of God's grace. Riches of God's grace. So, so, so the, 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 the limitation of his grace is I, I, even though I got zero, he would pull me to 40, and I'm qualified now. So that's the that's the beauty of this salvation. The, the, the third thing, no one can earn it. So again, uh, it's uh, it's 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 so simple, right? It's like Romans eleven sixteen says that. And if it is by grace, it is no longer on the basis of work. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. We cannot do any work, anything in our human capacity to earn this salvation. No way, no way. If we think that our, our pious, being pious, our being religious, our being committed, our being anything that we do that cannot, cannot and will not earn us this salvation. The, we don't deserve it. Definitely we don't deserve it. Why? Why we don't deserve it? Because, because we were sinners. Because we were sinners. We, we did not deserve it. Romans 5, 8 says, but God show his love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. So it, it's not that we transformed and then Christ gave us the salvation. No, that's not. Christ gave us the salvation, therefore we got transformed. So the, it's a, it's a, we, we, we were deep in our sins we could not, as from our human flesh, we cannot, we will, will not, we, we, in any, in whatever we do, I cannot live a day without doing a sin, right? It's, it's, a, it's something which we all, though we say this thing and our pastor has preached us that we, we, should, we, we have a hope in Christ that he is, going to deliver us once we come in front of him with our sins. And that's the hope that we have in Christ. But, but as a human, we have temptations, we have um, um, issues, we have a, a world which is out there where we have to live and, and we cannot go without doing sinning a single day. That's a, the, the standard of God is very high and therefore we do not deserve it. The salvation that God has given us, we do not deserve it, yet he has given it unto us. The next point was we stand justified. So what do we mean by being standing justified? So uh, 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake he made him to sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become righteousness of God. So we sinned, and when we are in front of our, uh, our Lord, um, now there is nothing needs to be done because somebody else took my sins away and then I'm cleansed and I'm sanctified, I'm purified and I stand justified. So none of my sins are now accounted for when I stand over there. 
how beautiful it is, right? How simple it is, right? There's nothing complicated, nothing difficult over here to understand. I'm standing there proudly saying that I do not deserve this, but my God, Jesus did it for me. So therefore I stand justified today. So that's straightforward, simple. And then not only he just he he justified our stand, but also he gave the uh, inheritance of his kingdom. So this is again uh, unimaginably simple and beautiful, right? Now now uh, I stand in a court of law, ready to be verdicted for a, a murder, and the 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 verdict is going to be very clear. The verdict is going to be you are going to be hanged until death. But the judge says that you you are free of your um, uh, act, whatever I did, plus you are made the ruler of this kingdom. Can you imagine that that's what God did? God not only cleansed us, washed us clean and, and, and purified us and made us holy. We stand in front of the God, plus he gave us a authority and a kingdom over there, which he has prepared for us. And that's what God's love is all about. That's what God's compassion is all about. That's what God's grace is all about. So I think I'll stop over here. The last thing is, what should we do? What, we, what should we do? And that's what the thief did, right? The thief did is, remember me, Lord, when you are in your kingdom. So that's all we have to do today is call upon unto him and tell him, Lord, that I do not deserve this thing, but, but you made me qualified for this thing. Uh, and... I wanted to read a verse over there, John 5, 24. Mm -hmm. okay, Joel is going to help me read that. Joel 5, 24, John 5, 24. I tell you the truth. Those who mm -hmm. listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They would never be condemned for their sins, but have already passed from death into life. Amen, amen, amen. So this is so beautiful. He does not come into judgment, but pass, but has passed from death to life. It's like we are in a toughest exam of this world, and we uh, up, we do not even have, have to appear that exam, and we are passed. We 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 are told like, okay, you are qualified how beautiful it is, right? So that's our Lord. Let's close our eyes and, 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 and remember the words that our Lord has taught us. He said that his yoke is light, his yoke is easy, and, and he's there with us to carry that burden of his yoke. So it's so simple. The message of the cross is so simple. It's not complicated. It's very easy. All of us can 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 very easily follow it. There's no complications. We just need to believe in Him who died for our sins, who cleansed us, and who who redeemed us from our sins. We just need to believe in Him, and that's how uh, we would leave our filthy rags of sin and and then completely devote ourselves to the Lord who has given us the life. Thank you, Father, for this time that you have given us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for going through the pain and dying on the cross, Lord, for our sins, Lord, not taking anything, not, 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 not uh, taking um, heed of the insults that were thrown at you, Lord, but you persisted, you continued on the mission that you undertook, Lord, to come onto this earth, Lord, and die for our sins, taking our burdens onto you on that cross, Lord, and dying the, this day, Lord, forever, Lord, for our sins, Lord, and now we are cleansed, Lord, and, and made justified in front of our Father, and now the relationship is established, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for, for doing everything for us, Lord. It's not us, Lord who could have done anything for our salvation, but it was your plan and you did for, for your people because you had compassion, Lord, because you have you, 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 you loved your people, Lord, hey, because you wanted us to be saved, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for each and every member of our church, Lord, of this, this universal church, Lord, your church, Lord, that you have given, Lord. Help us, Lord, to progress your kingdom on this earth, Lord, not once 
soul should be should, should, should be lost lord give us that burden lord that this day we can go out lord and 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 bring the good news of your kingdom to many more lord and many more would repent and be saved lord thank you father once again for this morning lord bless us lord each one of us lord abundantly lord according to our our, our uh, uh, your plans for us lord thank you father once again lord be with us through the remaining of the session lord and hear unto our prayers lord and let your spirit guide us through the remaining time lord we ask this prayer from our savior jesus christ amen, amen.